Hey crew, it's Parrot, and I'm back with some more Apocrypha. Today we're going to be di diving back into the book of Enoch. We will be dealing with the first three parables. Um, the first, or the three parables, I guess it's not the first three. This is book two. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what's up. The second vision which he saw, the vision of wisdom, which Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalaleel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, saw. And this is the beginning of the words of wisdom, which I lifted my voice to speak and to say to those which dwell on earth. Hear ye men of old time and see, and see ye that come after the words of the Holy One, that I will speak before the Lord of Spirits. It were better to declare to the men of old times, but even from those that come after we will not but withhold the beginning of wisdom. Till the present day such wisdom has never been given by the Lord of Spirits, as I have received according to my insight, according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits, by whom the lot of eternal life has been given to me. Now three parables were imparted to me, and I lifted up my voice and recounted them to those that dwell on the earth. The first parable. When the congregation of the righteous shall appear, and sinners shall be judged for their sins, and shall be driven from the face of the earth. And when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the righteous, whose elect works hang upon the Lord of Spirits, and light shall appear to the righteous and elect who dwell on the earth. Where, <clears throat> where then will be the dwelling of the sinners? And where the resting place of those who have been denied the Lord of Spirits? It had, been it, it had been good for them if they had not been born. When the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed and sinners judged, and the godless driven from the presence of the righteous and elect, from that time those that possess the earth shall no longer be powerful and exalted, and they shall not be able to behold the face of the holy. For the Lord of Spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy, righteous, and elect. Then the kings and the mighty shall perish, and be given to the hands of the righteous and holy. And thenceforward none shall seek for themselves mercy from the Lord of Spirits, for their life is at an end. And it shall come to pass in those days that elect and holy children will descend from high heaven, and their seed will become one with the children of men. And in those days Enoch received books of zeal and wrath, and books of disquiet and expulsion. And mercy shall not be accorded to them, saith the Lord of Spirits. And in those days a whirlwind carried me off from the earth, and set me down at the ends of the heavens. And there I saw another vision, the dwelling places of the holy, and the resting places of the righteous. Here mine eyes saw their dwellings with his righteous angels, and their resting places with the holy. And they petitioned and interceded for the children of men, and righteousness flowed before them as water, and mercy like dew upon the earth. Thus it is amongst them forever and ever. And in that place mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith, and I saw his dwelling, and I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of Spirits. And righteousness shall prevail in his days, and righteous and the elect shall be without number before him for ever and ever. And all the righteous and elect before him shall be strong as fiery lights, and their mouth shall be full of blessings, and their lips extol the name of the Lord of Spirits, and righteousness before him shall never fail. There I wished to dwell, and my spirit longed for that dwelling place, and there heretofore hath been my portion. For so has it been established concerning me before the Lord of the Spirits. In those days I praised and extolled the name of the Lord of Spirits with blessings and praises, because he hath destined me for blessings and glory, according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits. For a long time my eyes regarded that place, and I blessed him and praised him, saying, Blessed is he, and may he be blessed from the beginning and forevermore. And before him there is no ceasing. He knows before the world was created what is forever and what will be from generation unto generation. Those who sleep not bless thee. They stand before thy holy, thy glory and bless 
praise and extol, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of spirits. He filleth the earth with spirits. And here my eye saw all those who sleep not. They stand before him and bless and say, Blessed art be thou, and blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. And my face was changed, for I could no longer behold. And after that I saw thousands of thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. I saw a multitude beyond number and reckoning who stood before the Lord of Spirits. And on the four sides of the Lord of Spirits I saw four presences, different from those that sleep not, and I learnt their names. For the angel that went with me made, me known, made known to me their names, and showed me all the hidden things. And I heard the voices of those four presences as they uttered praises before the Lord of glory. The first voice blesses the Lord of spirits forever and ever. And the second voice I heard blessing the elect one and the elect ones who hang upon the Lord of spirits. And the third voice I heard pray and intercede for those who dwell on the earth and supplicate in the name of the Lord of spirits. And I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satan's and forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits, and accuse them who dwell on the earth. After that I asked the angel of peace who went with me, who showed me everything that is hidden. Who are these four presences which I have seen, and whose words I have writ, heard, heard and written down? <clears throat> and then he said to me, The first is Michael, the merciful and long-suffering. And the second, who is set over all the diseases and all the wounds of the children of men, is Raphael. And the third, who is set over all the powers, is Gabriel. And the fourth, who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life, is named Phanuel. And these are the four angels of the Lord of Spirits, and the four voices I heard in those days. And after that I saw all the secrets of heavens and how the kingdom is divided, and how the actions of men are weighed in the balance. <clears throat> and there I saw the mansions of the elect, and the mansions of the holy, and mine eyes saw there all the sinners being dragged from thence, which deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, and being dragged off. And they could not abide because of the punishment which proceeds from the Lord of Spirits. And there mine eyes saw the secrets of lightning, and of the thunder, and the secrets of the winds, and how they are divided to blow over the earth, and the secrets of the clouds and dew. And these I saw from whence they proceed in that place, and from whence they saturate the dusty earth. And there I saw closed chambers, out of which the winds are divided, the chamber of the hail and winds, the chamber of the mist and of the clouds, and a cloud thereof, thereof hovers over the earth from the beginning of the world. And I saw the chambers of the sun and moon, whence they proceed, and whither they come again, and their glorious return. And how is one superior to the other, and their stately orbit, and how they do not leave their orbit? And they add nothing to their orbit, and they take nothing from it. And they keep faith with each other, in accordance with the oath by which they are bound together. And first the sun goes forth, and traverses his path, according to the commandment of the Lord of Spirits, and mighty is his name forever and ever. And after that I saw the hidden, invisible path of the moon, and she accomplishes the course of her path in that place by day and by night, the one holding a position opposite to the other before the Lord of Spirits. And they give thanks and praise, and rest not, for unto them is their thanksgiving rest. For the sun changes off for a blessing or a curse. And the course of the path of the moon is light to the righteous and darkness to the sinners in the name of the Lord. Who made a separation between the light and the darkness and divided the spirits of men and strengthened the spirits of the righteous in the name of his righteousness? For no angel hinders and no power is able to hinder. For he appoints a judge for them all and judges them all before him. Wisdom found no place where she might dwell, and then a dwelling place was assigned her in the heavens. Wisdom went forth to make her dwelling among the children of men, and found no dwelling place. Wisdom returned to her place, and took her seat among the angels. And unrighteousness went forth from her chambers, whom she sought not she found, and dwelt with them, as rain in a desert, and dew on a thirsty land. 
And I saw other lightnings, and the stars of heaven, and I saw how he called them all by their names, and they hearkened unto him. And I saw how they are weighed in a righteous balance, according to their proportions of light, the width of their spaces, and the day of their appearing, and how the revolution produces lightning, and their revolution, according to the number of the angels, they keep faith with each other. And I asked the angel who went with me, and who showed me what was hidden, What are these? And he said to me, the Lord of the Spirits has showed thee their parabolic meaning. These are the names of the holy who dwell on the earth and believe in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. Also, another phenomena I saw in regard to the lightnings. How some of the stars arise and become lightnings and cannot part with their new form. Okay, so, first off, this is not a parable. This is a vision, right? This is not at all a parable. A parable is a story that is conveying a meaning outside of what is obvious in the story. Right? We get the parable of the sower. We get the parables of uh, the prodigal son. These are stories that are told to tell another story. This is a vision. right? This is 100% a vision of Enoch. Now, whether or not this is actually the, the works of Enoch, right? that is entirely up to you to discern i don't necessarily care one way or the other this is an old book it has been recorded for us to study <clears throat> i'll take things at face value right i do believe in visions i do believe in spirits i do believe in entities all of these things that are being dealt with i fully fully believe and so it doesn't bother me that this isn't a parable although it is mislabeled right it is not a parable it is a vision you can only understand a vision to the limits of your understanding, to the current paradigm that you have. If you don't know that the Earth is a globe, then you're going to try and explain things according to the flat Earth model. Doesn't matter that you're wrong. You don't have the knowledge to be correct. He can only interpret what he sees according to what he knows. And so when he's talking about the resting place of the sun and the moon, because he thinks that that's what it is. That's what the vision puts in his mind because he already has the concept for it. If he sees anything different, he doesn't have the concept for it. If he is pulled outside of the flat earth and he sees the globe, he won't understand that. There are a few nuggets in here, right? But for the most part, not really anything that we haven't seen before. There, there will be a judgment, right? There will be destruction, and the righteous will walk this way, and the unrighteous will go this way. And the ones that are appointed before and below them, they will do what they are supposed to do. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to add to this. Blessed is he, and may he be blessed from the beginning forevermore. Those who sleep, not bless thee. Now there was something, where was it? Oh, well, I, I can't remember what it was now. That's I need to stop in the middle of it, but I'm not, like, I don't like to do that. We get the names of the angels again. Like, we were given the names of the angels already. He has already received the names of both the good and the bad angels. Call them watchers if you want. But these four presences uh, are reiterated, but they're given slightly different responsibilities in this parable than they were given in the original book. Uh I don't remember what it else was. There was something else. Like wisdom came down and didn't find and went back. And there are stories of the moon joining the Earth's orbit around this time. We're not going to get into all of those today. But let's go ahead and do the second parable. This is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the Holy Ones and the Lord of Spirits. And into the heaven shall they not ascend. And on the earth they shall not come. Such shall be the lot of sinners who have denied the name of the Lord of Spirits, who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation. On that day mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory, and shall try their works, and their places of rest shall be innumerable, and their souls shall grow strong within them when they see mine elect ones. And those who have called upon my glorious name then will I cause mine elect one to dwell among them. And I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. And I will transform the earth and make it a blessing. And I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it. But the sinners and evildoers shall not set foot thereon. 
For I have provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones, and have caused them to dwell before me. But for the sinners there is no judgment impending with me, so that I shall destroy them from the face of the earth. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool, and with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness, like one of the holy angels. And I asked the man who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that son of man, who he was, and whence he was, and why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said unto me, This is the Son of Man, who hath righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness, and who reveals all the treasures of that which is hidden, because the Lord of Spirits hath chosen him, and whose lot hath preeminence before the Lord of Spirits in uprightness for ever. And this Son of Man, whom thou hast seen, shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats, and shall loosen the reins of the strong, and break the teeth of the sinners, because they do not extol and praise him, nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. And he shall put down the countenance of the strong, and shall fill them with shame. Darkness shall be their dwelling, and worms shall be their bed. They shall have no hope of rising from their beds, because they do not extol the name of the Lord of Spirits. These are they who judge the stars of heaven, trade, tread upon the earth, and dwell upon it. All their deeds manifest unrighteousness, and their powers rest upon their riches. Their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands, and they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits. They persecute the houses of his congregations, and the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits. And in those days shall have ascended the prayer of the righteous and the blood of the righteous from the earth before the Lord of Spirits. In those days the holy ones who dwell above in the heavens shall unite with one voice and supplicate and pray and praise, give thanks and bless the name of the Lord of Spirits on behalf of the blood of the righteous which has been shed. And that the prayer of the righteous may not be in vain before the Lord of Spirits, that judgment may be done unto them, and that they may not have to suffer forever. In those days I saw the head of days, when he seated himself upon the throne of his glory, and the books of the living were opened before him, and all his host, which is in heaven above, and his counselors stood before him. And the hearts of the holy were filled with joy, because the number of the righteous had been offered, and the prayer of the righteous had been heard, and the blood of the righteous had been required before the Lord of Spirits. And in that place I saw the fountain of righteousness, which was inexhaustible, and around it were many fountains of wisdom. All the thirsty drank of them, and were filled with wisdom, and their dwellings were with the righteous and the holy and elect. And at that hour the Son of Man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits, and his name before the head of days. Yea, before the sun and signs were created, before the stars of the heaven was made, his name was named before the Lord of Spirits. He shall be a staff to the righteous, whereon to stay themselves and not follow. He shall be the light of the Gentiles, and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him, and will praise and bless and celebrate with song the Lord of Spirits. And for this reason hath he been chosen and hidden before him, before the creation of the world, and evermore. And the wisdom of the Lord of Spirits hath revealed him to the holy and righteous, for he hath preserved the lot of the righteous, because they have hated and despised this world of unrighteousness, and have hated all its works and ways in the name of the Lord of Spirits. For in his name they are saved, and according to his good pleasure hath it been in regard to their life. In these days, downcast in countenance, shall the kings of the earth have become, and the strong who possess the land because of the works of their hands. For on the day of their anguish and affliction they shall not save themselves, and I will give them over into the hands of mine elect. As a straw in the fire, so shall they burn before the face of the holy. As lead lead in the water, they shall sink before the face of the righteous, and no trace of them shall any more be found. And on the day of their affliction there shall be rest on the earth, and before them they shall not fall and not rise again. There shall be no one to take them with his hands and raise them, for they have been denied the Lord of Spirits and his Anointed One. The name of the Lord of Spirits be blessed. 
for wisdom is poured out like water, and glory faileth not before him for evermore. For he is mighty in all the secrets of righteousness, and unrighteousness shall disappear as a shadow, and have no continuance. Because the elect one standeth before the Lord of spirits, and his glory is for ever and ever, and his might unto all generations. And in him dwells the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit which gives insight, and the spirit of understanding and of might, and the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness. And he shall judge the secret things, and none shall be able to utter a lying word before him, for he is the elect one before the Lord of spirits, according to his good pleasure. In those days the change shall take place for the holy and elect, and the light of days shall abide upon them, and glory and honor shall turn to the holy. On the day of affliction, on which evil shall have been treasured up against the sinners, and the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of Spirits, and he will cause the others to witness that they may repent and forgo the works of their hands. They shall have no honor through the name of the Lord of Spirits, yet through his name they shall be saved. And the Lord of Spirits will have compassion on them, for his compassion is great. And he is righteous also in his judgment, and in the presence of his glory, unrighteousness also shall not maintain itself. At his judgment, the unrepentant shall perish before him. And from henceforth I will have no mercy on them, says the Lord of Spirits. In those days shall the earth also give back which has been entrusted to it. Sheol also will give back which it has received, and hell shall give back that which it owes. For in those days the elect ones shall arise, and shall choose the righteous and holy from among them. For the day has drawn nigh that they should be saved. And the elect ones shall in those days sit on my throne, and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of wisdom and counsel, for the Lord of spirits hath given him, and hath glorified him. In those days shall the mountains leak like, leap like rams, and the hills also shall skip like lambs, satisfied with milk. And the faces of the angels in heaven shall be lighted up with joy. And the earth shall rejoice, and the righteous will, shall dwell upon it, and the elect shall walk thereon. And after those days and that place where I have seen all the visions of that which is hidden, for I have been carried off in a whirlwind, and they had borne me towards the west. There my eyes saw all the secret things of heaven that shall be, a mountain of iron, a mountain of copper, a mountain of silver, and a mountain of gold, and a mountain of soft metal, and a mountain of lead. And I asked the angel who went with me, saying, What things are these which I have seen in secret? And he said unto me, All these things which thou hast seen shall serve the dominion of his anointed, that he may be potent and mighty on the earth. And that angel of peace answered, saying unto me, Wait a little, and there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround the Lord of Spirits. And these mountains which thine eyes have seen, the mountain of iron, and the mountain of copper, and the mountain of silver, and the mountain of gold, and the mountain of salt metal, and the mountain of lead, all these shall be in the presence of the elect ones, as wax before the fire, and like a water which streams down from above, and they shall become powerless before his feet. And it shall come to pass in those days that none, will shall, none shall be saved, either by gold or by silver, and none be able to escape. And there shall be no iron for war, nor shall one clothe oneself with a breastplate. Bronze shall be of no service, and tin shall not be esteemed, and lead shall not be desired. And all these things shall be destroyed from the surface of the earth, and I looked and turned to another part of the earth, and there saw there a deep valley with burning fire. And they brought the kings and the mighty, and began to cast them into this deep valley. And there mine eyes saw how they made the, these their instruments, iron chains of immeasurable weight. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, For whom are these chains being prepared? And he said unto me, These are being prepared for the hosts of Azazel so that they may take them and cast them into the abyss of complete condemnation, and they shall cover their jaws with rough stones, as the Lord of Spirits commanded. <clears throat> and Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Phanuel shall take hold of them on that great day, and cast them on that day into the burning furnace, that the Lord of Spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness in becoming subjects to Satan, and leading astray, 
those who dwell on the earth. And in those days shall punishment come from the Lord of Spirits, and he will open all the chambers of waters which are above the heavens, and of the fountains which are beneath the earth. And all the waters shall be joined with the waters. That which is above the heavens is the masculine, and the water which is beneath the earth is the feminine. And they shall destroy all who dwell on the earth, and those who dwell under the ends of heaven. And when they have recognized their unrighteousness which they have wrought on the earth, then by these shall they perish. And after that the head of days repented and said, In vain I have destroyed all who dwell on the earth. And he swore by his great name, Henceforth I will not do so to all who dwell on the earth, and I will set a sign in the heavens, and this shall be a pledge of good faith between me and them forever. So long as heaven is above the earth, and this is in accordance with my command. When I have desired to take hold of them by the hand of the angels on the day of tribulation and pain because of this, I will cause my chastisement and my wrath to abide upon them, saith God, the Lord of spirits. Ye mighty kings who dwell on the earth, ye shall have to behold mine elect one, how he sits on the throne of glory and judges Azazel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of spirits. And I saw there the host of the angels of punishment going, and they held scourges and chains of iron and bronze. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, saying, To whom are these who hold the scourges going? And he said unto me, To their elect and beloved ones, that they may be cast in the chasm of the abyss of the valley. And then that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved, and the days of their lives shall be at an end, and the days of their leading astray shall not thenceforward be reckoned. And in those days the angels shall return and hurl themselves to the east upon the Parthians and Medes. They shall stir up the kings, so that a spirit of unrest shall come upon them, and they shall rouse them from their thrones, that they may break forth as lions from their lairs and as hungry wolves among their flocks. And they shall go up and tread underfoot the land of his elect ones, but the city of the righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses." And they shall begin to fight among themselves, and their right hand shall be strong against themselves. And a man shall not know his brother, nor a son his father, or a mother or his mother, till there be no number of corpses through their slaughter, and their punishment be not in vain. In those days Sheol will open his jaws, and they shall be swallowed up therein. Their destruction shall be at an end. Sheol will devour the sinners in the presence of the elect. And it came to pass after this that I saw another host of wagons and men riding thereon and coming on the winds from the east and from the west to the south. And the noise of their wagons was heard. And when this turmoil took place, the holy ones from the heaven remarked it. And the pillars of the earth were moved from their place. And the sound thereof was heard from one end of heaven to the other in one day. And they shall all fall down and worship the Lord of Spirits. And this is the end of the second parable. Which, again, is not a parable. It's a prophecy. It's a vision. It's a, whatever you want to call it, but it is not a parable. It is not a story that is describing something that will happen by using a different version of it. Right? That's what a parable is. A parable is telling a story without telling the exact story, telling a different story. This is a vision. In large part, this is just a misunderstanding of prophecy. It is almost certain that this part, these parables, at least were not from the time of Enoch. <clears throat> the idea of saving the Gentiles was not a part of pre-Jesus, right? Jesus himself, according to the New Testament, was astounded by the fact that he was supposed to bring salvations to the Gentiles. That was not part of his plan. That was not part of the Old Testament plan at all. The Gentiles could convert to Judaism and thereby be saved, but that was it. There was no overarching, you do this and you become and it's okay, right? And so when they're talking about that, not real. Like that, there's no way that this was during the time of Enoch. The time of Enoch was right about the same time they were genociding the entirety of the, the surrounding areas. Millions of people were dying, right? <laughs> They were the Gentiles. That's who they were eradicating was the Gentiles. And so it is almost certain 
that at least the second parable, but probably the three of them, are not indeed contemporaneous with Enoch. Most of what has been contained in here are retellings of the New Testament, right? Not even necessarily the Old Testament. The, the ideas and concepts here are definitely post-Christ. Post at least the Gospels, probably way past Revelations, right? Because Revelations probably was before the Gospels. And so this is just a misunderstanding of a lot of the prophecy. Uh, I'm not going to get into too exquisite of a detail here. If you would like to see how the prophecy is actually going to play out, you can check out the the Unconventional Revelation or the Unconventional Bible Study, which you should have already watched if you're here. And it lays out what will probably happen. Some of the things that are laid out here may happen, but for the most part, this is just a I'm right, you're not type of of writing, right? This is not a, this isn't even really a repent, right? This is a, a retelling of what they expect to happen to the unrighteous. This is a, a firming up of those who already believe. Let's do the third parable now, or the third not a parable, because the last two have not been a parable, so I'm going to assume this one has, I didn't read through these, right? Now we're doing this together in real time. And I went through and read the chapter heads. That's how I know that there's parables, but I did not read through the parables. So the fact that there has not been a parable is new to me. <laughs> All right. And I began to speak the third parable concerning the righteous and elect. Now, this is probably mistranslated. It's probably the third vision and not parable, right? I don't know. I don't have the original to look at, but that's probably what this is. <clears throat> Blessed are ye. Ye righteous and elect for glory. Oh, before we get too far, another thing about, about the second one, in the time of Enoch, this is an important thing. And if you have not been through the Bible study, you don't know this yet. But if you have, through the entirety of the Old Testament, we hammered a point. There was no hell. There was no heaven. There was Sheol, the place where all the dead gathered. But there was no thought of eternal damnation for wrong acts here in the Old Testament. Your sacrifice, which was required for you to be forgiven from your sins, which is not a thing according to the Old Testament, that whole situation was uh, to keep you subservient to the system. Right? Uh, there was no concept that when you die, like you, you did your sacrifice now for your life now. It was so that your blessings would come, right? If you didn't do it, you didn't have the blessings of God. That was the sacrifice. It was not a an eternal damnation situation. In anywheres in the entirety of the Old Testament, we went through that in excruciating detail right up here. If you go through and you check the unconventional Bible study and you actually go through the hundred plus hours of it, you will see what I am talking about. All right. Now, back to the third parable. Blessed are ye, ye righteous and elect, for glorious shall be your lot. And the righteous shall be in the light of the sun, and the elect in the light of eternal life. The days of their life shall be unending, and the days of the holy without number. And they shall seek the light and find righteousness with the Lord of Spirits. And there shall be peace to the righteous in the name of the eternal Lord. And after this it will be, shall be said to the holy in heaven that they should seek out the secrets of righteousness, the heritage of faith. For it has become bright as the sun upon the earth, and the darkness is past. And there shall be a light that never ends, and to a limit of days they shall not come. For the darkness shall first have been destroyed, and the light of the uprightness established forever before the Lord of Spirits. In those days mine eyes saw the secrets of the lightnings and of the lights, and the judgments they will execute, and they lighten for a blessing or a curse, as the Lord of Spirits willeth. And there I saw the secrets of the thunder, and how when it resounds above in the heaven, the sound thereof is heard, and he caused me to see the judgments ex executed on the earth, whether they be for the well-being and blessing, or for a curse, according to the word of the Lord of Spirits. And after that, all the secrets of the lights and lightnings were shown to me, and they lightened for blessing 
and for satisfying. In the year 500, in the seventh month, on the fourteenth day of the month in the life of Enoch. In that parable I saw how a mighty quaking made the heaven of heavens to quake, and the host of the Most High and the angels, a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand, were disquieted with great disquiet. And the head of day sat on the throne of his glory, and the angels and the righteous stood around him. And a great trembling seized me, and fear took hold of me, and my loins gave way, and dissolved were my reins, and I fell upon my face. And Michael sent another angel from among the holy ones, and he raised me up. And when he had raised me up, my spirit returned, for I had not been able to endure the look of his host, and the commotion and quaking of the heaven. And Michael said unto me, Why art thou disquieted with such a vision? Until this day lasted the day of his mercy, and he hath been merciful and long-suffering towards those who dwell on the earth. And when the day, and the power, and the punishment, and the judgment came, which the Lord of Spirits hath prepared for those who worship not the righteous law, and for those who deny the righteous judgment, and for those who take his name in vain, that day is prepared for the elect a covenant but for sinners an inquisition. <laughs> when the punishment of the Lord of Spirits shall rest upon them, it shall rest in order that the punishment of the Lord of Spirits may not come in vain, and it shall slay the children with their mothers and the children with their fathers. Afterwards the judgment shall take place according to his mercy and his patience. And on that day were two monsters parted, a female monster named Leviathan, to dwell in the abysses of the ocean, over the fountains of the waters. But the male is named Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a waste wilderness named Duodang, on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell, where my grandfather was taken up, the seventh from Adam, the first man whom the Lord of Spirits created. And I besought the other angels that he could show me the might of those monsters, how they were parted on one day and cast the one into the abysses of the sea, and the other onto the dry land of the wilderness. You know what? I messed up. I, I mixed up Elijah and Enoch when I was talking about during the, the genocide that was happening. This was prior to that, and that's my mistake. Like, I, mixed, I mixed him and Elijah. Elijah was taken up, and so was Enoch, and I mixed that up in my head. So, Just so we're clear, and I'll correct that. Thou, son of man, herein thou dost seek to know what is hidden. And the other angel who went, and that makes it even worse, right? Because that is well before the concept of heaven and hell, right? Way before. And the other angel who went with me and showed me what was hidden told me what is first and last in heaven in the height and beneath the hot earth in the depths and the ends of the heaven and on the foundations of the heaven and the chambers of the winds and how the winds are divided and how they are weighed, and how the portals of the winds are reckoned, each according to the power of the wind, and the power of the lights of the moon, and according to the power that is fitting, and the divisions of the stars according to their names, and how all the divisions are divided, and the thunders according to the places where they fall, and all the divisions that are made among the lightnings that may lighten, and their hosts that they may obey, and may at once obey. For the thunder has places of rest assigned to it, while it is waiting for its peal, and the thunder and lightnings are inseparable. And although not one, although not one and undivided, they both go together through the Spirit and separate not. For when the lightning lightens, and the thunder utters its voice, and the Spirit enforces a pause during the peal, and divides equally between them, for the treasury of their peals is like the sand. And each one of them, as it peels, is held in with a bridle, and turned back by the powers of the Spirit, and pushed forward according to the many quarters of the earth. And the Spirit of the sea is masculine and strong, and according to the might of his strength, he draws it back with a rein, and in like manner it is driven forward, and disperses amid all the mountains of the earth. And the Spirit of the hoarfrost is his own angel, and the Spirit of the hail is a good angel. And the spirit of the snow has forsaken his chambers on account of his strength. There is a special spirit therein, and that which ascends from it is like smoke, and his name is Frost. And the spirit of the mist is not united with him in their chambers, but it has a special chamber. 
for its course is glorious both in light and in darkness, and in winter and in summer, and in its chamber is an angel. <laughs> and the spirit of the dew has its dwelling at the ends of the heaven, and is connected with the chambers of the rain. And its course is in winter and summer, and its clouds and the clouds of the mist are connected, and the one gives to the other. And when the spirit of the rain goes forth from its chamber, the angels come and open the chamber and lead it out. And when it is diffused over the whole earth, it unites with the water on the earth. And whensoever it unites with the water on the earth, for the waters are for those who dwell on the earth, for they are nourishment for the earth and from the Most High who is in heaven. Therefore there is a measure for the rain, and the angels take it in charge. And these things I saw towards the garden of righteousness. And the angel of peace who was with me said to me, These two monsters prepared conform conformably to the greatness of God shall feed. And I saw in those days how long cords were given to these angels, and they took themselves wings and flew, and they went towards the north. And I asked the angel, saying unto him, Why have those angels taken those cords and gone off? And he said to me, They have gone to measure. And the angel who went with me said unto me, These shall bring the measure of the righteous, and the ropes of the righteous to the righteous, that they may stay themselves on the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. The elect shall begin to dwell with the elect, and those are the measures which shall be given to faith, <laughs> and which shall strengthen righteousness. And these measures shall reveal all the secrets of the depths of the earth, and those who have been destroyed by the desert, and those who have been devoured by the beast, and those who have been devoured by the fish of the sea, that they may return and stay themselves on the day of the elect one, for none shall be destroyed before the Lord of Spirits, and none can be destroyed. And all who dwell above in heaven received a command and power, and one voice and one light, like unto fire. And that one with their first words they blessed, and extolled, and lauded with wisdom. And they were wise in utterance, and in the spirit of life. And the Lord of spirits placed the elect one on the throne of glory, and he shall judge all the works of the holy above in the heaven, and in the balance shall their deeds be weighed. And thus the Lord commanded the kings, and the mighty, and the exalted, and those who dwell on the earth, and said, Open your eyes, and lift up your horns, if you are able to recognize the elect one. And the Lord of spirits seated him on the throne of his glory, and the spirit of righteousness was poured out on him. And the word of his mouth slays all the sinners, and all the unrighteous are destroyed from before his face. And there shall stand up in that day all the kings and the mighty, and the exalted and those who hold the earth, and they shall see and recognize how he sits on the throne of his glory. And righteousness is judged before him, and no lying word is spoken before him. Then shall pain come upon them as a woman in travail when her child enters the mouth of the womb, and she has pain in bringing forth. And one portion of them shall look on the other, and they shall be terrified, and they shall be downcast of, downcast of countenance. And pain shall seize them when they see that Son of Man sitting on the, sun, on the throne of his glory. Sorry. And the kings... And the mighty and all who possess the earth shall bless and glorify and extol him who rules over all, who was hidden. For from the beginning the Son of Man was hidden, and the Most High preserved him in the presence of his might, and revealed him to the elect. And the congregation of the elect and holy shall be sown, and all the elect shall stand before him on that day. And all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their faces, and worship, and set their hope upon that Son of Man, and petition him, and supplicate for mercy at his hands. <clears throat> Nevertheless, that Lord of Spirits will so press them that they shall hastily go forth from his presence, and their faces shall be sh filled with shame, and the darkness will grow deeper on their faces. And he will deliver them to the angels for punishment, to ex execute vengeance upon them, and because they have oppressed his children and his elect. And they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and for his elect. They shall rejoice over them, because the wrath of the Lord of Spirits resteth upon them, and his sword is drunk with their blood. And the righteous and elect 
shall be saved on that day, and they shall never thenceforth see the face of the sinners and the unrighteous. And the Lord of spirits will abide over them, and with that Son of Man shall they eat and lie down and rise up forever and ever. And the righteous shall elect, the righteous and elect shall have risen from the earth and cease to be of downcast countenance. And they shall have been clothed with garments of glory, and these shall be the garments of life from the Lord of spirits, and your garments shall not grow old, nor your glory pass away before the Lord of spirits. In those days shall the mighty and the kings who possess the earth implore to grant them a little respite from his angels of punishment to whom they were delivered, that they might fall down and worship before the Lord of spirits and confess their sins before him. And they shall bless and glorify the Lord of spirits and say, Blessed is the Lord of spirits and the Lord of kings and the Lord of the mighty and the Lord of the rich and the Lord of the glory and the Lord of wisdom and splendid in every secret thing is thy power from generation to generation, and thy glory for ever and ever. Deep are all thy secrets and innumerable, and thy righteousness is beyond reckoning. We have now learnt that we should glorify and bless the Lord of kings, and him who is king over all kings. And they shall say, Would that we had rest to glorify and give thanks and confess our faith before his glory. And now we long for a little rest, but find it not. We follow hard upon and obtain not, and light has vanished from before us, and darkness is our dwelling place, and our dwelling place forever and ever. For we have not believed him, be believed before him, nor glorified the name of the Lord of spirits. But our hope was in the scepter of our kingdom, in our own glory, and in the day of our suffering and tribulation. He saves us not, and we find no respite for confession that our Lord is true in all his works, and in his judgments and his justice, and his judgments have no respect of persons. And we pass away from before his face on account of our works, and all our sins are reckoned up in righteousness. Now they shall say unto themselves, Our souls are full of unrighteous gain, but it does not prevent us from descending from the midst thereof into the burden of Sheol. And after that their faces shall be filled with darkness and shame before that Son of Man. And they shall be driven from his presence, and the sword shall abide before his face in their midst. Thus spake the Lord of Spirits. This is the ordinance and judgment with respect to the mighty and the kings and the exalted and those who possess the earth before the Lord of Spirits. And other forms I saw hidden in that place. I heard the voice of the angel saying, These are the angels who descended to the earth and revealed what was hidden to the children of men, and seduced the children of men into committing sin. And so we end with the third, not a parable. Again, this is another vision. This is not a parable. A parable is the telling of a story so that you get the meaning of another story. This is just a vision. This is telling you what is recorded in the New Testament. <clears throat> Again, the concept of eternal damnation was not a thing. Enoch was prior to Moses. I got that wrong. But even Moses is not contemporary with the Pentateuch, right? It is entirely possible, but not probable, that Moses did indeed read, write the first five books. But it is more likely that it was written after him. It is more likely that it was written very long after him, probably post-Babylonian exile, but possibly during the time of David. Right? It was a reiteration of stories that were told. It was written down these stories that were told, and we went through we went through that in the first five books. If you're interested, go up here. But <clears throat> what is being recorded here is not the same things that is in the Old Testament. We went through the Old Testament in excruciating detail. So that I can say these things without having to reference back to specific chapters. You can go back and watch the whole thing. I don't do specific chapters. But there was no concept of hell. There was a Sheol. There was a place where the dead went. But it was not an eternal damnation thing. It was unknown, really, what went on there. It was assumed to just be darkness. There was no day of redemption coming for people to walk again. That is a New Testament concept. That was not in the Old Testament. 
but it's all over this. It wasn't in the first book, right? We're in the second book of Enoch. And in the first book, we got a very brief extrapolation of the things that we saw in Genesis up to Exodus. But here in the second book, these concepts are New Testament concepts. The redemption in New Testament, the Messiah, New Testament. All of these things are not contained in the Old Testament. That's why we went through in excruciating detail. You can only understand prophecy to the point in which your paradigm exists, right? We've talked about that already. But there is propaganda even 2,000 years ago, even 4,000 years ago, however long it happens to be that they wrote this book. This is propaganda, pure and simple. I'm not entirely sure that this person actually even saw anything. It doesn't have the markers that true visions do. This seems to be a man trying to reiterate what has been said and not really understanding what has been said. Hopefully I brought a little bit of enlightenment and not too much confusion. We will be jumping back next time into the book of Noah, book three. Again, this is probably not going to be 4,000 years old, right? But we're going to see what it says regardless. I'm doing this so that we have the actual record of what was said. I have not sat down and read all the way through all of the Apocrypha. I plan on doing most of them here. So this is just me kicking around the ideas and sharing them with you. That is how we do things over here. So hopefully I didn't bring too much confusion. This, this really is just a reiteration of New Testament concepts. It is really not even Old Testament. So to the crew, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you were here with me and I am praying for you every single day. Until next time, I love you. God loves you. You are perfect, whole, and complete just the way that you are. And this has been Pitt State. Peace.